Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. There are times where we need to support APIs which will be used to download files from the application. In today's video, I'm going to show how we can provide feature to download file from a .NET 5 application. So for that, what I'm going to do is first I'm going to create a ASP.NET Core web application and I'm going to name it as file download dot demo I'm going to create the application and here I'm going to select ASP.NET Core Web API and I'm going to use plain and simple ASP.NET Core 5.0 application once the project is created I'm going to go ahead and create a new file and I'm going to make the file as an CSV file so I'm just going to I'm going to name it as file.csv and once the file is created I'm going to give it some data so let's say it has three items ID name and address So we just create a couple of items here in the file.csv. So now the file.csv is ready. Next thing what I'm going to do is now I'm going to create a controller which will provide the feature to download. And let me give the name of the controller as download controller. And I'm going to create an API. Let's create a read write controller. And I'm going to name it as download controller. Now once the controller is created, I'm going to get rid of all this method. We don't need them. I'm just going to keep the get method. And for the get, now here is how we do the return. For the return type, we can use file content result. And this is the type of result which returns a file. Now for getting the file, what we need is the root path. Now I could just simply use directory dot get current directory and try to use that for figuring out what is the file path. But I'm going to get it as a constructor because I'm using file path here, but it can be a file to a storage device in cloud or something else. So create a constructor. Take the file path and then I'm going to declare a field for the file path and here what I'm going to do is I'm going to use data is equal to dot file dot read all bytes and for the byte we can say the file path and then once the data is read, there are a couple of ways we can do this. So let me show a fast way, which is a little bit of a code. And then I'm going to show the second way where it can be done just in a line. So first way you can do is you can declare var result is equal to new file content result. And the file content results takes uh, the content, which is a byte array. So it can be the data and then it takes the content type and for the content type we can give application slash octet dash stream that's the content type and then we can give the file download name and this can be anything and then finally we can return the result so that is one way of doing but I'm going to show you the simplest way of doing it just in a line so if we just want to do this entire thing in one line what we are going to do is we're going to just say return file which is a function defined at the base controller level and this one takes the byte array as the content which is the read all bytes and then the second parameter we can pass the content type 
which is going to be application octet stream and the third parameter in the overload if you see one of the overload contains the file download name so I'm going to give here file.csv and I'll get rid of all this code and you can see as simple as this it's just a single line of code to return a CSV file from the server it cannot get easier than this this is really mind-blowing how easy it has become to return a file from the server so once we do that now there are a couple of ways we can access it uh, one way to do it is directly calling the API which I'm going to show and then next we can just create a simple plain HTML page and I'm going to show how we can do it from JavaScript as well now the next thing I have to do is I am expecting this file path in the controller constructor so I have to set it up in startup now in startup what we can do is we can either create a class and set up this variable and accept the class or we can just add a string now the problem with adding a string to dependency injection container is if you have a dependency on other classes which expect string every class will get the same value but this is not the problem for this example here because I just have one controller which expects the string so I can easily do that so I'm going to do services dot add singleton and this can be a singleton because it's not changing and here I'm going to say system dot io dot path dot combine and here I'm going to say Tem dot io dot directory dot get current directory and the name of the file is file.csv this is the full path so if you see this is the name of the file here file.csv and if I combine the path of get current directory and file.csv it should give the complete file path one other thing I have to do is I go to the property of file.csv I should set it up as copy always so that it is copied in the output so now I am ready and now if I run this application now once this page is up if I go to API slash download you can see the file.csv is downloaded here and if I click on this it's going to open up the file that we created so this goes to show you how easy really it is to create a service to return a file back from the server and we can try it out from here as well and you can see it created a file in a temporary location you can click on it and it's going to download it's the same thing just it is running through swagger now let's just quickly show how we can create a simple web page to do the same thing from the browser just to show how easy to do it from the browser as well now to do it from browser what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a folder where I'm going to keep an HTML and JavaScript file and for that I'm going to expose the static file I have a video on how to expose static files from sp.net core application I'm going to share the link in the description you can take a look but what we are going to do is we are going to use app.use file server and in the file server we are going to say new file server options and to the file server options I'm going to pass few of the options so first thing is the file provider and file provider is going to be the new physical file provider and the physical file provider is under the namespace microsoft.extension.files provider so I'm going to add that and then here we are going to path the directory path and it's going to be system.io.path.combine and we're going to say get current directory and I'm going to create a folder called static files So this is going to be the path and then the next thing for the server options is the request path 
Now the request path I'm going to keep it as empty which means as soon as we go to the root folder our static files are going to show up and for enable default files I'm going to say true which will ensure that if I have an index.html by default index.html is going to show up that's all it means now you can go through the video that I created earlier to get a little bit more insight into it but this is all you have to do to expose a static folder now next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder here and I'm going to name it as static file and inside of the static file I'm going to create a new HTML file so I'm going to go ahead and select the HTML template here and I'm going to name it as index.html and in the index.html what I'm going to do is in the head I'm going to add a script tag and here I'm going to provide the source of the jQuery so I'm going to use jQuery I'm just using 3.5.1 and here we have to use the integrity and cross origin so I'm just going to paste it and that's the script and then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create another script tag it's here I'm going to give main.js that's a script that I'm going to create and the next thing I'm going to do is in the body is going to create a simple input tag and the type is going to be button and then the value is going to be download this is the button we are going to click to download the file and then I'm going to come here and I'm going to add a new item and this time I'm going to add a JavaScript file and I'm going to name it as main.js as I declared earlier and inside of the main.js we are going to create a ify which is an immediately invocable function in JavaScript and inside of this what we are going to do is we are going to do dollar of document dot ready so when the document is ready we want a function to be executed so we are going to do that and what we will do is once the document is ready we are going to attach an event for the button so we are going to say for the button we just have one button so we can just use this dot click so we want when the button is clicked a callback function to be executed so we're going to say function and this will be the callback function on the button click and here we're going to keep a very simple implementation where it's a window dot open and then here we're going to give the path for our API so which is going to be HTTPS colon slash slash localhost colon 5001 slash api slash download and then we're going to provide the target as underscore black that's all we need to do and as you can see here this is also literally just a couple of line of code to download the file now if I run this application again once the application is started we can go to the root folder which is going to invoke the index.html and now if I click on download just happened I did something wrong let's see oh, for the ify I have to execute the function I was missing this execution okay now let's run this because the function had to be immediately invoked for that we have to open close the braces I was missing that now let me go to the root folder and now if I click on download you can see the file is downloaded because we already downloaded it a couple of times it is coming with a 2 which is by default given by Windows if we click it again it will be the third one so as you can see it is so simple to download a file from .NET 5 application 
that is all i wanted to cover today if you like this video please give me a thumbs up and if you are new to my channel and if you think you are getting value out of my channel please subscribe to my channel and thanks so much for watching this video